You're watching memorable entertainment television. MeTV New York. Watching memorable entertainment television. Me TV New York. Town's been split down the middle, that's what's happening. The man's them clerks won't stop until they kill each other. I'm glad you're in town. The judge wants to see you. Huh? Come in. Well, George, how's it on to the judge? Fine, thank you, Ben. How are things up at the Ponderosa? Well, not too bad, not too bad. I've been wanting to get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, Clem said something about you wanted to talk to me about the... Silly feud between the mains and the car. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ben. It's not so silly. Huh? It's gotten to the point where everybody in town's caught between them. And what's more important, it's reached a state of potential violence where innocent people can get hurt. Well, Clem, you've got all the authority you need to handle uh, the situation. <laughs> when the mains and the clerks start knocking each other around, there isn't a thing I can do. One of them comes in with a busted nose, and they say, what happened? He's like, I fell off a barn. <laughs> with Sheriff Comfrey out of town, they don't listen so good to a deputy. Oh, come on now. You, you're not going to let them get away with that so easily, are you? Can't you arrest them for uh, disorderly conduct or uh, fine them for disturbing the peace? There are all kinds of things you can do. We can go on making small official acts that won't really stop the trouble. Or we can allow the violence to erupt into killings on both sides and then punish the offenders. But best of all, we can try, with the aid of men of goodwill, to prevent murder before it can happen. Now, Ben, the judge here has appointed a committee of townspeople to uh, tackle the problem. Go and talk to the mans and the clerks. That's a good idea. You are elected spokesman, unanimous. Me? And why would people think that I'm so deserving of such a dubious honor? Because you're impartial, Ben. Because both the mans and the clerks respect you. I can't accept this, this kind of a responsibility. I... And you're not going to flatter me into taking it on by using words like uh, impartial and respect and, and words like... Uh, besides, I'm too busy. I got a ranch. I got a ranch to run. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I guess there's no law can make you do it. Well, I guess there is no law can make me do it. <laughs> Watch the stars of MeTV painted in a different light. I wonder who they are. Whatever is in the passage must have terrified them. Not only do we have to forgive them about their destruction, but we have to be happy about it. But all is chaos and destruction! Oh, we 
he's got an answer for everything. Nobody questioned. Now did they? See the stars of MeTV like you've never seen them before on Night Gallery. Tonight at 1110 Central on MeTV. The poor shot of that whiskey, and he found out it was pure vinegar. He like broke the whole bar down. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing about this feud between the Mayans and the Clarks for months now, but I still don't know how it got started. Well, it, uh, it started when uh, young Jim Clark up and married Carolyn Mann, and they had twins. That started the feud? Well, not until they uh, up and took the twins and moved east. And well, I still don't understand. Well, the reason they moved east was uh, each family was so jealous of the twins that Jim and Carolyn were caught right in the middle, so they just up and left. And both families kept blaming each other for running them off, right? Well, with that for a start, they've been fighting over every other thing they could think of ever since. Uh, is it necessary for you boys to continue this conversation about the Mayans and the Clark? Is it absolutely necessary? <laughs> Gee, you know, the other day I was uh, down by Salt Creek, see how that new dam was holding up, and. Uh, well, that stream down there is nothing but a mud bank now, and, you know, it took me five minutes to get my horse to cross it. But he's a smart horse. He, uh, once he realized the barn was on the other side, uh, he just finally made up his mind that he had to go through with it, so he stepped right in and went right across without a slip. I spent a small fortune educating my oldest son, and he entertains me with old-fashioned homilies. Well, I guess you're right, though, Adam. I suppose I'll have to step in, whether I want to or not. Hoss? Come and call. Well, why is it always got to be me? How come you don't take little Joe? Now, you were so all fine anxious to get me into this thing, right? I figure you should each have a chance to try to help. How are we going to help without guns? Get over there at the man's and get in trouble. Now, look, if you're trying to be a peacemaker in the feud, you can't go around carrying a gun, can you? No, well, what are your plans? You figuring on influencing them with words? No, no, but uh, coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. Well, I thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a, a welcome party for the new mister. You know, everybody brings some food, we'd have a real get acquainted party. You mean with the man's and the clerks both there? Well, of course, that's just the point, don't you see? I figure they're not going to be doing any fighting right there in front of the church. And that'll give the new minister a chance to get to work on them right away. Yeah. I'll bet he'll appreciate your efforts too, Paul. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Well, sit down. Just bake your fresh pie, not in pet coffee in the middle. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That fresh pie really smells good. Horse, you want to sample that? Oh, dang, I reckon I am. Mm, it looks good. Come around? No, he's out on the range checking fences. Oh. A little trouble in town yesterday, and we never know what them clerks may be up to. Yeah. This uh, trouble between you and the clerks, that's been going on quite a while now. It's going on for quite a while longer. Caroline was the only child Tom and I had, and the clerks drove her and her babies away. Oh, well, now, do you think that this quarreling is going to make the loss any the less painful? Ben, if someone drove your sons away, would you think of them with kindness, treat them with love? Now, oh, Winifred, I, I don't think the clerks drove your daughter away. But Miss Mayer, how much good do you reckon all this fighting and arguing is doing Caroline? You're on the clerk side. Oh, ma'am, we ain't on nobody's side. Of course, we're not on anybody's side. We just thought maybe we could talk a little about I it. I have nothing to talk about, then. Well, uh, anyway, what uh, really came about, uh, you know, the new minister is going to be here next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Yes, I know. We're looking forward to meeting him. Yeah, we've missed going to church ever since we lost old Pastor Miller. Yeah, that was a real loss. Well, we, uh, we all thought it might be real nice if, uh, we could have a nice welcome for the new minister. Everybody bring some food, and we could have a real good get-together right after the services. Oh, that's a fine idea, Ben. I'll bring something really nice. Well, good. I knew we could count on you, Winterfell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, horse, I guess we'd better be getting along. Got a lot of other people to invite. Yeah. Thank you. Just leave that goodbye. Ben. 
Yes. Are you inviting the Clarks? Well, uh, of course. They're members of the church, too. All right. But just make sure at the party that the food is kept separate. We couldn't eat Clark food. I'm sorry. We would choke on it. The first family of the frontier. Me and my family. With the first lady of the frontier. I'm Victoria Barkley. Today at 3, 2 Central on MeTV. Keep doing. Go long. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy, how are you? How are you, Mr. Cartwright? Just fine. Hello, little Joe. How are you, Peggy? Hey, Claire, you get prettier every time I see you. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. By well, golly, I hadn't realized how, how grown up you'd become. Well, I'm grown up, all right. Fact is, I should be hanging out with my own kids' watch instead of my brothers and sisters. Well, uh, Peggy, girl as pretty as you must have a lot of young men buzzing around. Well, the trouble is, the nicest ones all seem to be related to, uh, you know who. Oh, uh, your mom and pa around? Well, Pa's out on the ranch somewhere, and Mom went to town with supplies. Oh. Well, I'll tell you why we came by. You know, next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Well, that's when the new minister arrives. We thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a welcome party for him after the sermon. You know, everybody bring some food and we have a good old get-together. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Mr. Cartwright. Be glad to tell him. Good. Uh, is everybody coming? Yeah, yeah, everybody's gonna be there. Even the man. Shh, don't use that name around here. Stampede the stock. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad somebody around here's got a sense of humor about this silly feud. Well, don't judge a class by me, Mr. Cartwright. Believe me, no one else takes it lightly. It's be pretty tough on you being caught in the middle of a feud like this. Well, it's worse than that, little Joe. Never knowing one of your family is going to kill or, or be killed. I sure hope that new minister can do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, I sure hope he can. Well, Peggy, uh, you give uh, your folks a regards and the message, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. I'll be there. It's the only time I get to see any of those good-looking man men. <laughs> well, see you Sunday, Peggy. Bye. Hello, Ben. You had us worried. We thought you were going to be late. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Hop Singh is away on a visit. It took the boys and me a little longer to prepare the food without his help. Well, if you hurry up and get here, the more I smell that food, the more hollow I feel. <laughs> hollow? Yep. Have you been dipping into those beans and pork all the way in from the ranch? Well, I'm afraid our beans and pork are going to look kind of puny up against all those fancy dishes. I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> I think I'm a little too nervous to eat. Oh, here come the man's. Ben, where do you want us to put the food and some of the finest milk produced in the territory? <laughs> well, it's mighty nice of you, Tom. It's sure we all appreciate your generosity. Uh, Tom wanted you and the boys to uh, take your gun belts off and... Well, we don't hardly go anywhere without them these days. Well, none of us is wearing a gun, of course, except Clem here. I can see that. But you don't expect us to ride these roads unarmed, do you? Why, we could be pushwhacked by the Clarks from any tree or rock. We don't need no rock to shoot at the Mayans when we want to. Come. Come now. Just, uh... John? John, this is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Just keep things peaceful. There ain't no Sunday peaceful with the Mayans around.
I don't want any guns drawn, do you understand? Not one. Take off your gun belts. Put them over there. I don't trust a man. Make them drop theirs first. Then, Clem, bring it out of the way. Listen to me, you two. I'm just getting a little tired of all this ruckus and mutiny and, and fussing and, 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 and all this violence. Now, now, just take off your gun belts or, or get out of here. No. Everyone is welcome here. Preacher, how'd he get there? This is your church, and I am its guardian. Hatred has no place here. This is a house of love, and you will enter as friends and neighbors. got in there without us seeing him. He sure handled everything. Yeah. Thank God. Gentlemen, we're at the right place to do just that. Hey. I'm Mark McCain. This is my Paul Lucas McCain. Their father and son. Did you miss me? Let me put it this way. I love you more than anything else in the whole world. Watch the McCain family tonight at 6 5 Central on Me TV. Disturbing me. I thought everybody had left. It's been quite a day, so I came in here and took out of my thoughts. Well, most everybody has gone home, but Mr. Cartwright said he'd give me a ride, so I, I thought I'd wait and have a word with you. All right, Miss Peggy. What are your words? Well, maybe it'll sound silly, but I wanted to thank you. To most of us young people, a year seems like an awful long time. To us, it seems like this terrible feud's been going on forever. I understand. I sometimes suffer from impatience myself. Though it never helps to solve the problem. Oh, there you are, Peggy. We're all ready to go now. Oh, Reverend, I'll, I'll say goodbye again. Uh, well, I wasn't interrupting anything, was I? No. Oh, of course not, Mr. Cartwright. I was just telling the Reverend how happy we are he's here. How grateful we are. Well, we, we certainly are grateful, Reverend. I, at the risk of repeating myself, I'd like to say again how inspiring your sermon was today. I, I, I've never seen the congregation as quiet or as attentive as it was. It was real fine. You know, I, I never thought that I, I would see what happened today. To see the clocks and the mayhands joined together in the hymn singing. <laughs> they joined together again pretty good a little later when they tackled all that food at the welcome party. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Do you think that this could be the beginning of the end of the feud? Well... I mean, wouldn't it just be wonderful if it were all over? Yeah, it would be. But I think you're being overly optimistic. Well, maybe so, Reverend, but uh, as head of the committee in charge of trying to get the mayans and the clocks to settle the differences, I can tell you we're pretty happy you arrived. <laughs> You'd like to transfer your burden over to me? Well, uh, yeah, well, no, no not exactly. I, I, but uh, you think that that responsibility is now mine? Is that it? Well, Reverend, I... Well, it seems to me that well, these people are suffering some sort of moral illness, and... Well, isn't that your calling, to minister to such illnesses? Ministers are human beings, too, Mr. Cartwright. 
They're all wise and all healing. My capacity for healing this breach is probably no greater than yours. Well, I, I thought well, we all hope. We all hope that we can transfer our decisions and burdens to other people, even ministers. But there are some problems you can't give away. Hello, Ben. Judge, I, I was afraid you might have already gone home. Oh, no, we were... Was something wrong? Yes. I came to see you, Reverend. I have a problem. I thought perhaps you could help. Yes, whatever I can do. This concerns you too, Peggy. It's bad news, I'm afraid. I, I just received a wire from the authorities back east in Illinois about your brother and his wife. There's been an accident. An accident? What do you mean? Jim and... Jim and Carolyn. Not... dead. Why are said? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no. And the twins? Are they all right? Reverend, I thought perhaps you could help break the news to the Mayans and the Clarks. No. No, I, I'll do it. I'll go home and tell Ma and Pa. I'll go with you and then go over to the Mayans. Well, I'll, I'll drop you both off. Babies. The poor babies. I'll, I'll get my thing. Miss Peggy. I wish I had the words to express my sympathy. Don't need words. I understand. What a terrible tragedy for those poor families. Judge, you said the children were spared. What's going to happen to them? The wire covered that, too. This concerns you, Ben. Hmm? The authorities in Illinois said that the parents' last request was that the twins be placed in your custody until you could decide their future. Well, why would they request a thing like that? You were a very good friend of the family? Well, yes. Perhaps they remembered that you remained impartial during the quarrel between the two families. Much, much too much of a responsibility. That was the parents' last request. Of course, you could ignore the arrival of the children, but the Clarks and the Mayans fight it, huh? No, I guess I, I couldn't do that. Make a decision is certainly going to take a wisdom far greater than mine. I'm ready. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? All right, from the beginning. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. Program. We got just one big question. Yeah, when? Today at 4, 3 Central on BTV. Help! It's a... The judge, you're sure. Twins are coming on this stage. You saw the wire yourself, Ben. Reverend? Both families understand clearly. You explained everything very carefully. They were both very upset by the news, but I'm sure they understand. I don't want to be influenced one way or the other by the Clarks or the Mayan. But you have no choice. Look. You both give me your word there wouldn't be any trouble. There isn't going to be any trouble. My wife here just wanted to see the kids, see that they're all right. They've been through a bad time. 
Tom. I know exactly how you and Winifred feel. But I want you to promise me that you won't upset the children once they arrive. How about them? John, I just got through talking to Tom and Winifred. In fact, I don't want the children disturbed once they arrive. We just came in to see the kids. Wanted to make sure and they're all right. Just make sure that's all. Here comes the stage. Don't forget what I said now. to my ranch, it's called the Ponderosa. And after a good hot meal and a little bit of sleep, I'm going to show you some new animals which are just born. You can play with them. Would you like that? Mr. Cartwright, why don't I tie a horse behind your wagon and come along? You might need help. Well, thank you, Reverend. That's very kind of you. I think I might need some help. Come on, let's go. Peggy, what are you doing here? I, I thought you might need some help with the twins. Peggy, the boys and I... I told the boys to go on about their jobs. You what? I think they were glad to escape. Now, Peggy, you know I must remain impartial in this. I can't make it appear as if I'm playing favorites. I will try to influence them, Mr. Cartwright. I promise. I... I just want to love them. I'll take him into the house. That young lady is wise beyond her years. The children need a woman's love right now. I only hope I can make the right decision. With God's help, you will. like this must be uh, trouble, huh? That's just what it is. We've got to see your pa, Adam. Well, go ahead and make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> well, uh, have you got a new hobby, Adam? No, uh, <laughs> but I'm getting to be a pretty good expert at dressing dolls. It's the second time Sue dropped it down the well. How are the children doing, Adam? Oh, pretty good. Uh, after that first day, after Peggy got him calmed down, and uh, after we uh, got Sue this doll and uh, Kenny an animal to play with, get, I'll get Pa. <clears throat> oh, hi, wow, man. What's up? Well, we came to see your Pa. Well, Adam's going to get him. Me and Joe are back there in the kitchen trying to whip up something to eat for the kids. You fellas join us? No, thanks. No, Hoss. Hey, 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 you can't go in there with that pig. Kenny? Now, look, how many times have I told you not to bring the piglets into the living room? Don't <laughs> so, can't you take care of those kids without me? Now, look, I can't talk, watch the kids.